So imagine this is us right here. This is our laptop. This is our computer, right? And we want to go to olinesecurity.com. Olinesecurity.com is this big globe. In order for us to go to olinesecurity.com, our computer, laptop, whatever. Well, let's be technical. No, whatever. Our web browser needs to resolve. I'll explain that in a second. It needs to resolve the DNS name. The DNS name in this scenario is olinesecurity.com. It could be google.com. That's another DNS name. It could be facebook, instagram.com, whatever. Sorry, I said whatever again. <laughs> but in order for our web browsers to hit olinesecurity.com, it needs to resolve the DNS into an IP address. So what our web browser, this guy is going to do, it's going to reach out to a DNS server. It's going to ask the DNS server, hey, what's the IP address for olinesecurity.com? DNS server is then going to check its cache or it's going to check its log. It's going to check its files to see. Let's be technical. It's going to check its records. It's going to check its DNS records to see if olinesecurity.com exists inside of it. If it doesn't, then it just acts another DNS server. If that doesn't know it, it just keeps asking the next and the next and the next DNS server, which leads me to a type of DNS attack called amplification attack. <laughs> Got it. Come on, Jason, why'd you do this? But it's going to ask this DNS server who is O-line security. Once this DNS server knows, it's going to send it back to your web browser. And the web browser is then going to go to online security.com. So this happens on port 53. So it's going to go to online security.com and you do what you want on there. You sign up for the course, you have fun, have a good day. So that's how that works. Route 53, DNS, 53. DNS is big. You can't get around it. We need it. Um, funny thing about it, DNS is unsecure. It's, it's strange, right? Hmm. That's how we have a secure version of DNS but called DNSSEC. But DNS in its natural form is unsecure. And the thing about the internet is the internet was never created to be secure initially we're just catching up with security now the internet was created to do things on the internet it was created to send messages from one place to the next and then after a while people started abusing it and they started understanding cypher versus clear text and all that good stuff okay so yeah um we don't have enough time to do the wireshark thing i'm not even going to try to rush it so while we're still here I want to talk about an attack. We'll do Wireshark next Thursday, but I want to talk about an attack that is Security Plus related since we're here. It's called the DNS amplification attack. It's one of my favorite attacks. It's cool. I don't care what you say. It's cool. So, DNS amplification attack. You just learned how DNS resolves in two minutes. It's that easy. Um, your web browser does it every time. Well, to know so after we go to olinesecurity.com and there's my handy dandy tool after we go to olinesecurity.com after this web after this dns server right here this first one these are all dns servers by the way guys i know they look the same i'm sorry um i'm sorry let just change All these right here at the right are DNS servers, okay? So after our web browser reaches out to this DNS server and it gives us the IP address for onlinesecurity.com, our web browser does two things. It goes to onlinesecurity.com like we asked it to, and it stores that information in its cache. The information it's storing is the DNS name and the IP address. The DNS, onlinesecurity.com, resolves 
resolves, R-E-S-O-L-V-E, it resolves over to an IP address. So it stores that in its cache. It stores it in its cache because so it doesn't have to come back out to the DNS server to ask for it again. Now it's just going to be faster. As soon as you type in onlinesecurity.com, it knows where you're going to. It knows because it saved it in its cache. Now, DNS amplification attack. Let's say you were going to onlinesecurity.com for the first time. Just imagine that. You type in onlinesecurity.com in our web browser. The web browser does not have it saved in its cache. This is what happens every time your web browser doesn't have a website saved. It's going to ask the closest DNS server. This is a DNS amplification attack, guys. Remember that. So it's going to access DNS server, same way it always does. Hey, do you know the IP address for olinesecurity.com? Can you resolve this into an IP for me? The DNS server will either have it or it won't have it. If it doesn't have it, it's going to ask this guy. And then it's going to ask this guy. If this, if this person doesn't have it, then it's going to ask this guy. If they don't have it, then it's going to ask this guy. Now, check this out. This is why I love this attack. Because it's, well, let me not say that and get in trouble. So, if this guy doesn't have it, oh, hold on, let me slow down. So, if this guy had it, he's just going to report back to your web browser, hey, here's the IP address. The amount of data that it sends back is is little. It's it's small. Okay. If they didn't have it, they send that request to this person. Now, if this person does have it, the response to the request is a lot. Well, the response back to your browser is a lot bigger now because it's a response from this server going to this server going to this server. It's not going straight back to your server. I mean, to your web browser. The response is going from this guy to this guy to you. If this person doesn't have it and this person has it, the response is another server bigger. So now the response is going from this guy to this guy to this guy to you. If this person doesn't have it, the response is even bigger and so on and so on and so on. Now what this is going to do is crash your web browser. It's gonna crash your computer. It's a, the DNS amplification attack is just denial of service attack. That's it. They just have this fancy, cool looking name. I like the name DNS amplification. It sounds good, rolls off the tongue knife, but it's just a denial of service attack. It's a DOS attack. Just crashing your computer with a big response from DNS servers. Now you have to be, you, you can't just go ahead and try to do it. You have to know what you're doing, right? You're not going to give a web browser a domain name that actually um, exists. You, you, you have to be crafty with it. And I don't want to go in that rabbit hole. <laughs> so that is a DNS amplification attack. Okay. That is a security plus attack. Um, we talk about it in our threats and attacks um, section at online security. And it's that simple. It's that simple. It is that simple. I guarantee you. You can go on online and go on all these other websites and they may not break it down as simple as that. But it's that's all it is, guys. That's all it is. So sorry we didn't get, in, get to get into Wireshark. I really wanted to. I like Wireshark and I want to go back into TCP dump and show you all exactly what each line meant um i know it's, it felt like we rushed the, well i don't think we rushed the last time but i want to show you what each line means you know the source ip the destination ip the request the urls the what the http responses and the requests um mean so we'll get into that next thursday next cyber thursday we'll do one tcp dump again um if you have any questions please stop me before I do my thing. But 
thank you everybody for joining us on cyber thursdays once again cyber thursdays is geared to getting people ready for the security plus this is just a step i guarantee you this is in everything we can't touch everything in cyber thursdays the way we want to as you just saw um this is why i highly recommend you if you really want to get security plus certified just like some of the students in this session right now from my last class go to onlinesecurity.com and register for the next course there's only i think there's three maybe less I, less seats left there's 10 seats maximum it's a 10 week course four days a week two hours starting at 6 15 p.m ending at 7 35 monday through thursday like i said and there are no rabbit holes over there everything is structured everything is broken down and the, the objectives is one to get you security plus certified that that's your favorite as a student and of course that's one of our favorites but our super favorite objective is to help you get a job help you get a job and keep your job okay i'm a security consultant if you guys don't know and as a security consultant i can't tell you how many times i've come on to a gig to help a sock to help a vulnerability team to, oh, I, it's the first time i've said vulnerability in a long time i usually just say that to help a vat team out or whoever i'm consulting you don't know how many times i see people who get security plus certified and they get fired it, they get fired this is not a regular field okay this is not a field where we're gonna play around with you and babysit you like not every job is gonna do that in this field if you're certified you're certified when you're certified you're telling us that you know what you're doing if you get into the job and after three months six months we still have to babysit you and hold your hand you're getting let go like nobody wants you to be a burden you're slowing us down you're interrupting progress you're not you're not an asset that's why I smile when we talk about online securities class, because you become an asset. You become an asset before you even get the job. You're at the interviews and I'm not going to say that, but you're at the interviews and you're the one asking the interviewers, okay, how can you help me? I know I can, how I can help you. I know what I can do. There's a difference between people who can come into an interview and speak like that. And the difference is how they were taught. You can go ahead and try to self-teach yourself Security Plus and get certified. You can, anybody can try and do that. It's difficult when you don't know what you're, what you're studying. It's difficult when you're new to the field because there's a lot of information and it can be boring if you don't have somebody exciting and enthusiastic teaching it to you. And then on top of that, you need to learn how to get the job. You got the Security Plus certification. What now? <laughs> What you going to hang it up on your wall? You're going to take a picture with it, a selfie. What's the purpose of it if you're not going to get hired? That's, online security is not just here to get you certified. We're here to get you a job. We're here to help you get employed. We're here to keep you on the job and not get fired. People do get fired. You don't need a warning to be fired. You will not get a warning to be fired. If they're nice, they may. When I worked at the White House four years ago, there were no warnings. When I worked at DHS, there were no war warnings. When I worked for a gaming company, mind you, this is an entirely different sector. There were no warnings. They could drink at the gaming company. They could drink at work. They had a little bear fountain at work where everybody was trying drinks. It was pretty cool. But this is a field where you take what you learn, where you need to take what you learn and be able to apply it. If you can't, I'm not exaggerating it probably under exaggerating it if you can't apply what you learn you will be let go there's an organization I'm not going to say their name i don't want to get in trouble because i'm going to we're recording this and we're going to put it out there there's an organization and other orgs are following suit they'll hire you and i promise you this is not a lie i've seen it multiple times they will hire you <laughs> They will hire you and give you a, let me not say the name. They'll give you a test. They'll give you a test after you get hired, after you went through your interviews. <laughs> they give you a test 
and you have to analyze a PCAT. You don't learn how to analyze a PCAT from online classes, from the like uh, Udemy and the Security Plus classes that are online, like Udemy, Professor Messer, and whatever else is out there. You don't learn how to analyze PCAPs on those things. There's an organization for entry level positions. They will give you a test to analyze PCAPs. You don't know what PCAPs are, that's fine. You learn that in the Security Plus course. You have to analyze the PCAPs and they give you, I think, 24 hours. You can only do it while you're at work. If you can't complete it, guess what? The big old, oh, I almost gave it up. Um, the big old security officers, I should say. The big old security officers come to the front door and they escort you on out. And you're going to have a good day. Go back home and wonder why you just got let go. So with that being said, thank you all for joining us on Thursdays. Security is probably the best thing that's ever happened to me. Um, it's the best thing that's going to keep happening. It's a lucrative field. There's so much money in this field. It's ridiculous. And the best thing about it is you get to have fun with uh, making money, doing what you love doing. There's so many things out there. Um, I'm a security consultant. I do so many things, pen testing, network analysis, SOC, policy, risk management, a whole bunch of things. You don't have to be technical. You can if you want. Personally, I think that's where the fun is. It's a big field. You can have fun with it. And the only way to get into it is by getting certified. If you have no experience, it's okay. You just need to get certified. With that being said, thank you all. I appreciate your time. If you have any questions, I'll stay on here for about five to 10 minutes. After that, I'll be logging off for the day.